game streaming. It's a compelling idea, the ability to play our games instantly and on demand from almost any device. It's worked so well for movies and TV that physical media and standard broadcasts are almost seen as a joke now, says the guy talking to you from the internet. So why wouldn't it work for games, especially since it has some juicy added bonuses? Games would have no downloads, installs or patches, and we could play them on just about any potato powerful enough to run a browser. Plus, it would mean that all of a sudden there'd be a billion devices that can play the latest AAA games. That kind of rapid expansion for the industry could be revolutionary. It opens up some fascinating potential for developers. Having their gaming hardware tucked away in server farms rather than under your TV means they have access to... And running games on hardware right next to the multiplayer servers could expand the potential of online games like nothing we've seen before. I'll be honest, I don't know why that stuff only works on the cloud and not on ordinary consoles, but they say it's possible, in theory at least. And I guess that's kind of the thing, isn't it? It's all a bit in theory. Yes, we've seen game streaming in practice. On Live came and went. That's hardly a good poster child, and it never came to Australia. There's PlayStation Now. No one uses that, and it's not in Australia either, so who cares? There's even GeForce Now, which is in Australia, but honestly, did you even know that was a thing? Because before researching this, I certainly didn't either. And now Google is throwing its very big hat into the ring with their upcoming streaming service, Stadia. It promises 4K gaming at 60 frames per second with high dynamic range, you know, all the good stuff. They've even been boasting the ability to jump directly into a game being played by a streamer and pick up from their save. So you could essentially watch someone play a game right up until the end before assuming direct control and clocking it yourself. I mean, it's not a bad way to get through that pile of shame. And it plans to do all this by tapping into the company's many data centers, which are located all around the world. And if there was ever a super giant tech company that had the potential to pull something like this off, it's Cyberdyne. Sorry, Google. I'm always mixing those two up. Meanwhile, there is still some competition out there. Microsoft's xCloud, for instance, comes in close second with their history and experience in gaming, plus their infrastructure. But regardless of who's in the lead, the big takeaway here is that big players are taking big bets, that the time has come for game streaming to make it, well, big. And as good as that all sounds, I know a lot of people, especially us Aussies, are going to take some serious convincing beyond just a creepy pre-dystopian keynote. Tonight, I have never been more proud to be a part of such an incredible corporation. Uh, no, that's from Robocop. Our first true piece of technology. Uh, that's Prometheus. But we're not just about global security. Uh, no, that's Robocop again. That's uh, close enough. For starters, we need to be convinced latency won't be an issue. That's the time it takes a button press to go from the controller, through the internet, to a server, register on the hardware, get output and then be beamed back to you. Because if we can feel that delay, even in the slightest, it's game over. But even with all the whiz-bang streaming tech in the universe, they still need their cloud hardware to be close to us. If those signals need to travel even more than a bee's dick in geographic terms, it's not going to work. And then we have the broader issue of Australia's, shall we put it, shitty internet? The idea that we can't play our games when our internet goes down or our speeds get too low to deliver anything other than a buffering screen isn't that enticing. But look, let's try to stay positive here. Surely that's just a matter of time, right? Sooner or later the world will be blanketed by data centres and clouds and we'll all be hooked up directly via seven different 9G mobile networks. Even then, in the long run, a major issue I suspect for a lot of gamers is that we don't want to lose that physical connection to our games. In a streaming-only future, what happens to the bedroom coders, the hackers, modders, the people who pull the game code apart from the physical copies? What about preserving games for future generations, or just nostalgia's sake? Giving up our physical grasp on software does have some scary ramifications, but asking these kind of questions only goes to prove that it's unlikely streaming is going to kill consoles and gaming PCs. And really, the worst thing I can come up with is that we'll all just suffer from game library oversaturation and never get around to actually finishing any of them. Oh my god, that explains the whole YouTube stream hijacking thing. Brilliant. Look, gaming isn't a zero-sum game. New ideas, business models, new technologies, they can all and will have to all exist together at some stage. When we asked you your opinion on game streaming, it was overwhelmingly negative. And while I do understand the cynicism, I also don't think it's worth criticising until we get around to seeing it in action, for real. Personally, I'm excited to welcome our new game streaming overlords. I want these strange new experiences. I want developers to have unlimited power. And I want to never have to worry about waiting for a 40 gigabyte patch to finish downloading before I can play my game. With Stadia, we can all dream bigger and together build a playground for every imagination. We'll just, you know, deal with all the neural net processes and murderous sentient AI stuff later on.